statement. I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Iraq. Thank you, Mr. President. Iraq historically has been an important element of stability in the Middle East. Russia supports the constructive steps which have been aimed at strengthening the internal political situation, ensuring security and the socio-economic development of the country with, as a matter of course, observing its sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity. We note the vast contribution of the UN and Special Representative Kubish in stabilizing the situation in Iraq. And Mr. Kubish, we know that this is the result of your capacities, your ability to establish constructive, mutually respectful dialogue with all the political forces in Iraq. We are pleased to note that the May parliamentary elections were crowned with the election of the senior leadership of the Republic. We underscore that Russia respects the sovereign choice of the Iraqi people. We call upon everyone to act in a similar fashion. We welcome the successful and decisive actions of Iraqi partners to combat the threat of terrorism. A great deal has been done on the counterterrorism front. The so-called ISIL caliphate has been dealt a crushing blow. We are convinced that this was possible inter alia thanks to the uncompromising war with terrorism being waged in neighboring Syria, and Russia has made its contribution to achieving that aim. In spite of these successes, the security situation in Iraq remains fragile. ISIL remains active in a number of Iraqi provinces, hiding in hard-to-reach areas and also blending in with refugees and the local population. Terrorist attacks remain their favored weapon. We categorically condemn any manifestations of terrorism and express sympathy with the Iraqi government, the people of Iraq, and the families of those killed, and we wish a swift recovery to those injured. We are convinced that effectively combating this threat will only be possible through the coordination of counterterrorism efforts and the initiative of the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, to create a broad coalition of states to combat terrorism remains relevant. A pressing challenge for the Iraqi leadership is rebuilding the economy, the social sphere, the nuts and bolts of the country in general. The international community must help Baghdad to develop integrated, comprehensive measures aimed at improving the socio-economic conditions. We note in this respect the February Conference on the Reconstruction of Iraq in Kuwait. We note the priority of providing assistance to refugees and IDPs, which incidentally is highlighted in the latest report of the Secretary General on the situation in Iraq. This work must, of course, of course be done co collectively and without double standards, not only in Iraq, but also in the Syrian and any other context. Politically and practically, Russia is su supporting the steps of the Iraqi leadership on the security front and also on the long-term normalization of the situation. We are helping to strengthen the Iraqi army. We have effective cooperation on matters of regional security within the framework of the Quadripartite Coordination Center in Baghdad, and we are expanding bilateral trade and economic links. We welcome Baghdad's use of bilateral channels for links with regional partners, the conduct of a policy of good neighborliness and normalizing relations with those in the region. The position of Baghdad and Kuwait to rapidly settle the problematic issues re remaining from the first Gulf War should be particularly supported. We applaud the work of the high representatives of the UN previously who made a contribution to resolving and addressing this humanitarian file. We are concerned by the possible negative impact on the fragile domestic political situation in Iraq as a result of the artificially whipped up situation around the Islamic Republic of Iran. Iraq has the right to build and develop normal relations with its Iranian neighbors, but nobody has the right to undermine those relations. Once again, we underscore the need to launch in the region dialogue mechanisms instead of sanctions and threats. All the more so because the experience of this cooperation and interaction has been developed. Russia, on the basis of historically friendly and healthy relations with Iraq and other states in the region, continues and will continue to play an active role in the Middle East region. We stand 
ready for interaction with regional and international partners. Our general efforts would be supported by advancing an architecture of security and cooperation, which would stipulate that all issues that arise would be resolved not through the use of force and threats, but through mutually respectful dialogue. In conclusion, we would like to note very positively the work of the UN assistance mission in Iraq. We believe that its priority should continue to be assisting the advance of national reconciliation processes which are needed to achieve long-term stability in the country. For our part, in contacts with all of the political forces of Iraq, we urge the Iraqis to unify their efforts through a comprehensive dialogue and to achieve consensus agreements which would take into account the interests of all ethnic and religious groups. We express gratitude to all of the mission's staff working in complex conditions and also personally the special representative of the Secretary General, Mr. Kubish. We highly appreciate your professionalism and personal qualities which have allowed you to earn the respect of all political forces in Iraq. We wish you success in this new and highly responsible post. Thank you for your attention. I thank the representative of Russian Federation. Now I